So we carry on with our explanation for chapter uh, two, uh, railway rolling stock systems. And we are, will be talking about a new section, which is rail active suspension system. Active suspension means controlling your suspension system in an active way. And this active way happens through electro, electrical control system that consists of sensors and actuators. So without further ado, let's start by talking about rail active primary suspension. Our rail active suspension system. Well, so let me start from the beginning. This is the rail active suspension system. We'll talk about, uh, first of all, introduction. What is a rail active suspension? We'll talk about rail active secondary suspension and rail active primary suspension. And what are the differences and where they are being used in railway uh, technologies. Then we'll be talking about tilting technology. So mechatronics technologies in general that combine between uh, electrical bars or control systems and mechanical bars has been all around for a long time now. So a flight control system, and you can see this in a drone, where a drone try to keep its, its, uh, itself in the air through controlling the, the, uh, through controlling the motors. So based on your interaction with the drone, the drone uh, change the motor parameters based on, uh, to, to make sure that the, the drone stays in the air. So this is a flight control system. This is an example of mechatronic systems that is being used in transportation. In automobiles, you have active stability control. So for example, if the, if the vehicle feels that you have that, uh, that you are being, uh, you will slide, you would have that active stability control, that additional control being added to the vehicle as a result of that sliding. In railways, it can be seen as tilting trains and other applications, we will be talking about them. So, but tilting trains is the, is the, uh, is the biggest one. So history of railway design, uh, vehicle design, to understand how people design their vehicle, between 1825 and 1960s, they have been based on empirical design period, based on testing, experiments, and making sure what works, and they repeat it. But in, uh, between 1960s to 1990s, it was an analytical period. You analyze the forces, the stresses, you make sure you have the right calculation, and you build on that. After 1990, many, uh, many uh, design, the design happened to be a mechatronic design period. So based on the forces that we have, the, the, the system will act accordingly. So based on what we sense, we will be, uh, our vehicle will act accordingly. So there are two, there are rail active suspension and this can happen on a, a primary level or a secondary level. The secondary one can happen as tilting. And tilting means that train will be uh, move uh, will tilt on curves, which will make it moves uh, forty percent faster. And this will response have a great response to deterministic track inputs. Those inputs that we know this curve location and will help in uh, making the train goes faster on the on those curves. Active secondary suspension also it provides better response to random track irregularities. So you have deterministic track irregularities, something you know, and sometimes it's random track irregularity. Uh, for example, a defect or a certain track that is uh, that is uh, going through a, a, a poor substructure. Uh, so you, the train will realize that and will will change the suspension response accordingly. But it's, it's not only from bogey to body or a secondary suspension system. It can be a primary suspension system or through active steering and stability control. So it can add uh, uh, additional steering and, uh, and stability to the wheel set. So it can be from bogey to body and from wheel set to bogey. To understand this in more details, this is the mechanical system, which will be mainly the suspension systems. It will get information from a monitoring system that, that is controlled by an electronic controller, and that will actuate a response to adjust the parameters of that mechanical system, of that motor, of that suspension system. Also, it will be getting track inputs. So this part is about 
random uh, inputs and this part is about deterministic inputs at this part will have a curve at this part will have a uh, at this part will have a, a gradient and based on that it will react accordingly and this will result in the vehicle output the accelerations and other uh, mechanical outputs so as as i said before the the design issues you need to make sure that you, your active suspension system is responding to random in, inputs like track irregularities but also deterministic inputs such as curves and gradients something that we know already you would consider this through modeling and equation i'll not do the equations now but just to give you a brief outlook this is where the wheel set will be. This is the first primary suspension as a spring and a damper. So this is the wheel set and this is the bogey. This is the bogey. And here we have the secondary suspension system, a spring, a damper, and an actuator that based on this input, the random input from the track will provide a mechanical response to the vehicle. So control technology. How we control how the actuate how the technology is being controlled. What are uh, what are the technology that is in use? As an actuator, it can be a servo, hydraulic motor, pneumatic, electromechanical, or electromagnetic sensors. That can be inertial accelerometers and gyroscopes and other kinds of sensors. So this is basically the actuators are servo, hydraulic, or uh, electromechanical, and maybe sensors. You have a, an accelerometers and the gyroscope. And based on those, uh, the reading of these sensors, the actuators will act accordingly. A practical example is the Bindelino, where, have a, it, where it has a lateral active suspension, and Siemens, which has conform bogey. And if we look at the rail active primary suspension, which this is between the wheel set and the bogey, and not the secondary suspension system, it can solve the problem haunting. So sometimes you'd have haunting, haunting because of chronicity or other factors. And uh, you would, uh, or the movement of wheel sets on curve because it have uh, these lateral movements. So you would have these actuators and you would have these sensors that will provide active control to the wheel sets to prevent this wheel haunting so that wheels can go straight uh, on curves or straight uh, can be stable on curves or stable in case there is a chance of haunting. So this is an, an example of active primary suspension solution that use active steering control and active stability control. What are the technical advantages of uh, an active primary suspension system? It improves the performance, it reduces the vehicle maintenance and much reduced impact on infrastructure. Practical examples is wheel motors, torque controlled wheel sets and creep controlled wheels, wheel sets. Also tilting, we'll be talking about tilting. It's a widespread application. So tilting allows trains to go faster on curves up to 30%. This is a Bindelino going on a curve. And there are many famous tilt systems. The, the one that are famous Bindelino and it's owned by Alstom and Talgo. And this is a Spanish system. And this can be very much similar to Talgo, but Talgo is different. But, uh, uh, but both are tilting systems and they, are, they use different technology. There are different strategies to control tilting. It can be annulling tilt control, a command tilt control, or a precedence tilt control, or a track database tilt control. Based on the track database, you would be acting, based on the track database, you would be acting accordingly. So you know the track database and you act according to that. This was our act. Uh, this uh, this was our section about active uh, suspension systems, railway active suspension systems. We talked about uh, a rail active primary suspension system and rail active secondary suspension system. And I hope this was informative. It's just a very brief uh, introduction, so you can. Uh, build on this knowledge by reading and uh, looking more into this topic in more depth. We'll see you in the next, next section and have a great evening.